السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ladies and gentlemen let's continue our computational fluid dynamics CFD tutorials in this video we're gonna talk about or simulate a very tough case uh, we're gonna simulate a centrifugal pump but in ANSYS fluent and also ANSYS mechanical using the two-way data transfer or the ANSYS system coupling two-way fluid structure interaction Okay, you can find uh, this official tutorial, this short tutorial about uh, the same topic as the system coupling, two-way fluid structure interaction on YouTube, part one and part two, if you want to get some information about it. And also, there is another tutorial uploaded by Dr. Dalio and this 2020 tutorial two-way FSI of a pipe bend or you also find it you can also find it uh, on YouTube on his uh, channel really thank you very much for sharing such tutorial it is very very useful okay now uh, we're gonna see uh, this paper is on steady flow and structural behaviors of spherical pump under cavitation conditions. We're not going to focus on the cavitation because uh, to make it to make this tutorial uh, simple, okay? Because it is actually complicated by nature. Uh, FSI simulation method. There are two methods for the FSI simulation of a spherical pump, or for the thermal machinery. So one-way coupling, uh, actually I used something like that before on a static structural uh, analysis on uh, a turbine, uh, okay, and I uploaded it a few years ago, actually uh, we used the CFX to uh, run the simulation and get the pressure contours uh, of the fluid domains and then we imported the the results into ANSYS mechanical okay this is one of the types that you can use only if the effect of the solid domain is not significant okay the effect of the fluid domain on the solid domain is only uh, the significant one but if we have both effects are significant the solid effect on the liquid or the fluid domain and then from the fluid domain on the solid domain we have to use the two-way coupling the two-way coupling method is more accurate uh, but it is time consuming and requires greater computational resources okay so as you can see here so this is the strategy for strong two-way coupling method. You have your solution of structure, you have the structure calculation and fluid calculation. The previous video I uploaded, uh, I only showed how to uh, run the fluid calculation and then import the results into structural calculation, okay? Uh, because we only investigated the effect of the fluid on the solid but now we're gonna investigate the effect of the fluid and the structure on each other so uh, the solution of the structure uh, when we get uh, by the forces on the structure mesh and then we get the displacement and forces converged and then we see inner plate displacement on fluid boundary then the forming fluid mesh and then the solution of fluid and so on okay so I have your time step complete. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, suppose that we uh, we're gonna use blade uh, the design by Vista CPD for centrifugal pump design. Okay, uh, suppose that we're gonna use this information okay and then you hit calculate for this impeller and then if you are interested to get the volute too you can use this okay this is after uh, calculation 
and then you can get the efficiency chart okay after that simply you can create the uh, geometry to see uh, what's going on and also you can create the volute so let's create the geometry takes time I'm gonna use Ansys Fluent this time, not CFX. We're gonna use the complete rotor of the pump. So we're not gonna use the periodic conditions as usual in the CFX Turbo mode. So as you can see here, there is, this is the solid domains and here are the fluid domains for the full rotor and the full pump, okay. So now we have the geometry. So let's open it. Okay. Take some time. So we have here the blades. Depending on the information you have just given to Vista. Okay, but we have here uh, an issue as you can see this these blades uh, are not uh, shows that the rotation actually is clockwise the rotation of this rotor will be clockwise okay but I want it I want the rotor to rotate counter clockwise So as you can see, gentlemen, the inlet will be from this side, okay? As you can see, so it rotates clockwise and I want this pump to rotate counterclockwise. So what to do is close, okay, and then we're gonna delete this. Why? I'm gonna transfer this design. Create new legend. By the way, you can rotate. Uh, I think you can rotate it from the geometry. Uh, directly by uh, selecting all the blades and rotate them 180 degrees but I'm gonna show you another way just one more tip to know uh, more okay this from Vista and as you can see here is the uh, rotor if this is the inlet this pump is gonna rotate clockwise okay i wanna rotate it counter clockwise so we're gonna open the tools reverse span direction flow direction reverse rotation direction so as you can see if i make it like this this now is okay so uh, here is the inlet and now it can rotate counterclockwise. This is what I want. Why? Because 
something related to the volute. Okay, so now I'm gonna close it. Okay, now I'm gonna create new geometry, but uh, not from this. You can create here, but I guess there is something correct. You have to transfer data to new geometry. Okay, it is not gonna open unless we refresh it. Take some time. Actually, these uh, systems are very sensitive, and you have to know exactly what to do, otherwise, you will not be able to do or deal with it. Now it's okay. Now we have transferred uh, the data from Vista to Blade Gen, and then we inver inverted the uh, flow. Okay. So, gentlemen, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is the inlet here, and now the pump can rotate counterclockwise. Okay. However, it is not in the coordinates. I need so we're gonna give it rotation just rotate it all bodies fluid and solid and here about let's see I wanna make it like that, so so as you can see here, yes, this is exactly what I want. Okay, now, gentlemen, uh, we have the fluid domain and the blade, which is the solid domain. Okay, so what we are gonna do now, I wanna prepare the fluid domain at first. Okay, so I'm gonna suppress body this and then export this fluid here. Getting domain mm -hmm. as a step file. Okay. Can create new geometry from here. I just want to open uh, geometry and delete anything. So it takes some time. So you cannot delete uh, the uh, geometry generated from blade gen, but now we're gonna see from Vista. Yeah. So this is from Vista. Let's open it. Okay, it's another way, and actually. Here it is pretty easier to delete these things. Now, X, Y, I'm gonna import the file of the rotating domain that I have just as uh, yeah I've just generated, but as add material, okay? Because I'm gonna uh, create a pattern, and add material allows the combination between the uh, domains. Okay, so now I'm gonna create a pattern. It must be created after add material, not add frozen. It's gonna be circular, the geometry, 
this we have five blades we have to give the axis this is the axis I'll copies four copies one two three four five blades okay Gen generate we have one part one body and now I have one part one body why because I used add material not add frozen and so now we have the impeller okay one more tip is to export this impeller okay impeller as step or rotating domain if you want to replace uh, the file no problem as you like now we're gonna open all of this convener to do one more tip and then we can move ahead so this is the full rotating domain five blades one two three four five it's so one two three four five counterclockwise rotation you have to be 100 percent sure of the rotating rotation direction like this okay now uh, we're gonna open the file is impeller impeller that we have uh, just saved open okay okay don't have this so we have here one more tip is to uh, create an extrusion to close this hole okay so I'm gonna create 2d sketch and then extrude it to this okay there is I think not correct we're gonna uh, create a sketch this way just to measure the distance okay I'll close from here to here constraints okay the dimensions just copy it then extrude that like this meter okay and so and this is it okay so this is what i wanted just to complete the rotor now i'm gonna export it again with a new name okay so uh, after that i'm gonna uh, use the previously used file just to uh, stop any confusion I have already done that okay now I don't need these things I'm gonna use the uh, previously uh, handled file now gentlemen uh, you can get the uh, volute uh, from the Vista as I said and you must be sure that the diameter of it exactly matches the diameter of the impeller 
to use the slanted mesh technique or any uh, inner uh, kind of interfaces, this diameter must be identical to the uh, diameter of the rotor. Okay, anyway, I uh, prepared another volute for simplicity. Where is the volute flow? Yes. I prepared it. You can do these things, of course. Uh, it matches the diameter of the impeller. And then I exported it. Okay. Okay. Exported it as, ex uh, as a step file. So now we can start. After that, for the uh, to generate the solid parts, I'm going to show you what I have done. Just hold on. Okay. We're going to suppress this. So, so gentlemen, as you can see, you import the file uh, impeller flow as step as add material, and then the volute flow as add frozen. Okay, you must make one add material and the other add frozen. You must do that. Okay. After that, I extruded the face, this face, as add frozen. So now I have add material, add frozen, add material. So this is add material. So this must be add frozen. Okay, as the inlet pipe. Okay, so far it is very good. Now we're gonna talk about the solid domain. Okay. So, do you remember that we have suppressed that? Now I, will, I need it. I'm gonna suppress the flow fluid and then I export it to make the solid part. So, this is solid. Okay. Okay, as step again, and you open it here. Okay. Yes, then you uh, create a pattern. Five blades. Okay. And the next step is to create the full impeller as solid. Okay. Okay, to do that, gentlemen, you have to uh, get the uh, section from the fluid domain to really know how to make the fluid solid interface, the interface between these blades, solid blades and the uh, flow field or the fluid domain, okay? So you can do it by any uh, method. So gentlemen here I exported the uh, flow field from the Design molar, and now I'm gonna get a cross section. I'm gonna cut it.
So as you can see here, this is the fluid domain. So the solid impeller must uh, have inner face, an inner face between between it and this. So you get the cross section of that, and then you build your solid impeller. Okay, so you get the projection of this, and then you will be able to do or continue the solid uh, impeller. You know these uh, things, you have to be familiar with it. So to save time, I'm going to show you what I have done. Okay, here is the solid impeller. I'm going to show you step by step what happened. So this is the blade and then circle pattern like what I have just done. Okay, after that, I created a sketch like this and then extruded it. After that, uh, I worked on the model and then this shaft and this and after that, I got the revolution. So here to see the sketch of the, the projection that I got from the flu, fluid domain, you can see that I built based on it the design of the impeller, solid impeller. You have to be accurate, okay, and it will work okay and you can slice graphics to see okay just copy and paste the uh, the projection and then i added this by offset added these things to make the thickness of the solid impeller okay it's pretty easy as you can see you just add the thickness based on the projection you get it's pretty simple gentlemen all these things based on the projection I'm not gonna waste the time in showing the details of it but you must make it carefully to be able to get the projection or the fluid solid interface between the fluid and eventually you will get this but the basic idea is to get the projection like what I have just shown you okay It's not an easy task, but it's gonna take a long time actually if I show you every single detail. Eventually you will get the solid impeller that matches the fluid flow. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, as you can see, eventually I got the impeller. Uh, we have here based on the blades and the projection okay the cross section that I have just shown you okay after that you export this as step file to be used later okay so now we do not need this So uh, after that, uh, after gentlemen, we uh, have here three parts. After that, once press, I added uh, this domain to increase the length of the outlet to be used as an out. Then I imported the solid impeller that I have just shown you. Simply, now it matches the cavity, as you can see. It is based upon the projection okay this solid impeller again it is based on the projection of the cross section okay you can do this uh, before carrying out any CFD simulation just to be sure 
of get it done correctly as you can see we have here the fluid inside the solid so we have here the solid and here is the solid this is the solid impeller and the other parts are the fluids after that by the way import this is at frozen to, uh, to avoid any issue with any add material part okay or they will be combined together so make it this order after that uh, what happened I created a plane to make a sketch create a plane here and then I extruded that for the bearings and then I created a linear pattern to create the better uh, the uh, bearing number to extrude as add material because we have this shaft that has frozen so this will be add material and then the pattern this is very easy to be done so now gentlemen we have this bearing system for the shaft just do these things create a plane and just uh, two circles and then extrude them and then create the pattern and now we have exactly something like this for the bearing system okay or the supports so now this is done but uh, one more tip you have to make this fluid fluid domains are fluid and then fluid and then fluid we have here four because I added the uh, outlet flow uh, after that you uh, select this I'm sorry uh, no this uh, we have here two solids and notice that we have here part two this is the impeller a solid impeller and solid impeller actually when I imported imported it they were two bodies so I selected these two bodies and I made them create from new part just to make the mesh conformal you can check out the conformal mesh and non-conformal mesh so now we have only the uh, parts of the solid impeller uh, actually they were separated so now I joined I joined them by clicking on both and right click and create from new part okay like the support part no create from new part so this is over here okay because it's gonna take a very long time and we have to uh, save the time I'm gonna show you quickly the setup here is the meshing So uh, once you open open it, you will find all the parts are okay, but you have to suppress the solid parts. Okay, you must suppress all the parts. Now we only have four domains: this impeller, and then volute, and the outlet uh, flow, and after that the inlet pipe. Okay, you must suppress all other parts. And we have here part two which represents the solid impeller as one piece okay this is it here after that you create the mesh uh, the mesh of course must as you can see here the mesh gentlemen you must carry out a mesh dependence study changing the element size based upon or based on the y plus calculations you have to investigate this kind of things but for this only for this tutorial for simple SD I'm gonna use the some random uh, values but you must not exceed 0 0.98 for the maximum skewness you must not exceed 0 0.98 okay we have here and then the statistics so this is very good for my PC right now after that the name selection actually this is the end flow you select the body the whole body 
and then the face as inlet and then rotating impeller as a body and then the stationary volute you will find these details also in my uh, previous uh, tutorial about the centrifugal fan you can watch it to see step by step how I named selections but it's pretty easy and then the outlet as face and here is the deal the dynamic wall so let's see actually gentlemen the dynamic wall is the uh, wall that will be affected by the solid impeller okay so let's hide all other bodies So the dynamic wall, 24 faces. How? Any wall that is an, it represents the inner face between it and the solid impeller. Okay, so of course, uh, here, all these green faces interact with the solid impeller. That's why I selected them, okay? And every single face that has an inner face or inner action between it and the solid, you have here the solid impeller inner action. So you have to get all the faces that represent the dynamic wall, okay? It's pretty easy all bodies and here in the outlet outflow this is it after that you close okay and then you open the setup I'm gonna Reset this because I will show you how to set up it again. No problem. Uh, now, reset the solution. I'm supposing now that you it's the first time to do this, so of course, you will not find uh, these right check marks. Okay, just open the setup and based on your PC you will select the number of threads task manager and we should see here performance I have four I can use them use them uh, together I just used three uh, to leave one for the mechanical later and the double precision of course because of the complexity of this now open fluent takes some time so we generated the flow do, fluid domains and the solid domains the solid domain is generated based on the projection of the uh, blade okay to create your solid impeller and prefer to make it as one single piece if uh, you import it and uh, there are two pieces or three pieces just uh, select all of them and create them from new part okay now it's transient and models uh, no energy uh, we're gonna use viscous SST like Dr. Dell you just for simplicity here uh, I'm just I followed the same procedure but from the paper used k epsilon they used cfx but you know fluent is stronger 
So uh, you have to, of, co of course, study which uh, turbulence model you should use depending on your study. After that, the materials, I defined the water liquid and here in the flow, water liquid, outlet flow, water liquid, rotating impeller, I'm gonna give uh, very simple boundary conditions here and then I'm gonna show you another boundary conditions, other boundary conditions, just 20 radian per second, of course it is not like the uh, realistic uh, cases, but just for simplicity, and use water liquid, okay, and then the boundary conditions, also I'm gonna give inlet velocity, just a very simple example and based on the hydraulic diameter it's uh, maybe the uh, diameter of the impeller or the diameter of the inlet pipe it's up to you and you have to uh, create the or give the turbulence intensity based on the measurements which may be 10 percent i'm just using five two because uh, of the low velocity and uh, also for the outlet Uh, you have here to put the uh, gauge pressure based on the performance or the uh, head. I'm just making it here zero gauge just for this tutorial. For instance, you'll find here lots of uh, details about these kind of things. And after the boundary conditions, uh, do not mesh, do not use, uh, do not open any mesh interfaces. They are uh, automatically done. Okay, now here's the dynamic mesh. After a few, it's the first time you will find create and edit, and then you will use the dynamic wall. We have uh, given it this name in meshing the dynamic wall or for the fluid solid interface. Use its system coupling and then click create. Not uh, change any reference values methods here. Uh, here uh, should be coupled, and uh, here it depends on the mesh and uh, the uh, the accuracy. So just for this tutorial, I use these things. You must do your search, and also the controls are the same uh, for the monitors. Here we're gonna make a monitor. Okay, I'm gonna show you uh, this but later. Let's let's see, and then we can here initialize the solution. Okay, you must see uh, the conversions here. Uh, decreasing here the values means that uh, this is converged. Uh, as you can see, if you do not find this you must change the mesh size or the method of generating the mesh but this is decreasing decreasing if you find this value higher than this value you should create the mesh again but now it's okay and uh, for auto save if you want to make an animation or uh, save the data every specific time steps and also for the residuals, or here the residuals to increase the accuracy, you have to uh, increase the uh, zeros here. But for me, I'm not gonna change anything just because of uh, the this CPU is not strong. Now also the time step you will find here the recommended time step based on the calculations. Here I'm gonna use this random one. Uh, and number of time steps. These things will be override or uh, it will be overridden by the uh, setup in system coupling. Okay, we're gonna make it here four. After that, you save your file and exit. Okay. Gentlemen, if it is your first time, of course, you'll uh, find 
no solution. I'm just gonna reset it because it was uh, I ran it before. Uh, now uh, I'm supposing that you still do not have the structural. Okay, you get the transient structural and grab it here. Okay, after that you share the geometry to have the same geometry. But before this, you open the engineering data and you input all the materials for the solid impeller. This is pretty important. Okay, now we're gonna open the mesh to start the structural part. Uh, once you open it, you will find all the parts, but you have now to suppress all fluid domains, one, two, three, four, and just leave the solid parts, the uh, shaft, uh, and the uh, solid impeller, plus the two bearings, and give every one of them the material. I only have here structure material, so it is the default. You must put the material here before doing anything. Uh, the same for the mesh, you uh, start uh, seeing the uh, suitable uh, mesh size. For this tutorial, just I used this for simplicity. After that, the analysis setting, we have here one, uh, uh, this is number of steps, and current time step, and 20 seconds. This is the end time, it's like the fluent. We're gonna make the flow time for this mission 20 seconds. And here all the time stepping no off because we're gonna hear time step just one second. This is only, again, for this tutorial, you have to uh, make the uh, recommended values by calculations. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, after that we uh, select uh, the uh, impeller and the shaft as a whole part and give it two bodies, just two bodies. Do not select the uh, these bearings and give them 20 rhythm per second in the component. Okay, exactly like the value of uh, the given in fluid. And then use the face, select the face and give it, this is the fixed support and here is the other fixed support. Okay, exactly like the experiment and you can change anything here. I'm just showing you the simple idea. It's based on the experiment and how uh, you do the fixation and what exactly going on. Okay, but here is the fixation, this fixed support and fixed support and here is the rotating impeller, okay? After that, the most important thing is the fluid solid interface. Again, any face that has a contact, direct contact with the flow domain, okay, or uh, is getting wet by the fluid, just select it. Okay, I've selected all these faces. Okay, uh, it's gonna add it by insert. No, like this. Just something like that. Transient insert. You uh, rotational acceleration, and then uh, fixed support, and then fluid solid interface. You can do these things very easily. After that, for the solution, you right click insert and then you select these things. The total deformation, uh, total deformation, equivalent elastic strain, fun misses. And then from the stress tool, you get the safety factor. And after that, the force reaction. The force reaction is gonna be for the fixed support number one and the force reaction for the fixed support number two you will be able to select them okay i'm just having here the solution because it was done before okay just close it i'm gonna show you something if i reset the solution
Okay. Suppose that it's the first time I open this setup. Yes. Yes, and it's twenty off and one second. Okay, everything is okay. You will find this. Enforcer action, you will find here the first fixed support or fixed support two or weak springs. You do this, okay? After that you close. Now it's the time of the system coupling to get into the picture. System coupling. Okay. So first of all, you update this. Okay. It just uh, prepares it, and after that, you grab this setup here, and then you grab this setup here. Okay, before opening it, system coupling, right click and update again. So eventually. Or so far we have fluid domains, influent, four domains, the inlet pipe, the outlet pipe, and the rotating flow, and the rotating uh, or the stationary volt. Okay, I have just shown you every single uh, step. Okay, and then we move to the solid parts, and then. We update both. It is the same procedure shown in Dr. Dalio's full tutorial. Okay, just here the complexity comes from or is originated from the uh, the geometry. The geometry is from Vista and then Blagin to uh, make the rotation counterclockwise, and then you get the projection uh, to build a pure solid impeller this is the pure CAD step okay then you import these things into fluid and then share it with structural and then suppress here the fluids and here suppress the solids one more thing before we start setting coming you make sure that this name is completely different from this name fluid here and here is structural why to be able to distinguish between them on the graph so just open the setup here and click yes okay and here start with the analysis setting here is the end of time it's gonna be 20 it is the same or less than the uh, value set in the mechanical it is gonna override the value of fluent and the system size is gonna be one second now right click on fluid uh, no uh, control select it and here select again the dynamic wall I wanna create create a transfer so this is the two-way solid so we get the force uh, no as you can see here we have here data transfers uh, structure fluid solid interface to fluid okay and then from the fluid dynamic wall to the structure and so on. then click update and this is it take some time It's a pretty tough uh, procedure. No warnings and errors. Okay, this is good. Okay. 
Of course, uh, using uh, more accurate uh, or realistic values in the boundary conditions and more accurate element size for the mesh in both mechanical and uh, fluent will enhance the convergence. So the trick of this whole system originates from the complexity of the geometry. You must handle the geometry pretty well, create your fluid domain and then get a cross section and then get the projection and build on the projection the solid part. They must be in a match, okay? They must get a match because of the solid and fluid interface. Then you uh, select the dynamic wall, uh, the fluid interfaces, okay, the faces, and then uh, the same for the solid parts. You will understand this more if you watch the other simple tutorials by Dr. Dalio, uh, like I said in the beginning of this tutorial, okay? So now we have the iteration number one. Please just follow the same procedure carefully, very carefully, especially the uh, projection, because any uh, one millimeter that exceeds or make the interfaces are not uh, on the same phase or there is any issue with the uh, interfaces, you will find issues. So please be accurate. In other, in other words, you after uh, making the fluid domains, get the cavity and then you get the projection. So as you can see, this is the data transfer from structural and then fluid not converged yet. So this is the first iteration or two second iteration. As you can see, it is very, very time consuming. So only do this type of simulations if you really need it. If there is a significant effect uh, comes from both domains, solid and fluid. And by the way, here the time step is just one second. We need uh, lower or uh, smaller as recommended by the paper and the calculations because in the paper they used the real boundary conditions. I'm going to show you this after finishing this step. Just quickly to uh, repeat again, once again, uh, what happened and what the procedure should be because it's a tough procedure. So as you can see from structural and then fluid data transfer, that's why you must uh, be sure that uh, you give a name for the fluent as fluid, for example, and then here is structural to be, uh, to be able to distinguish between them. The software will not be able to proceed if there is the same name. So we have here 
coupling iteration number four and five. So I'm gonna pause uh, this right now because it will take some time and then I will come back. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have just uh, done it. Uh, congratulations for finishing this monster system coupling surface shot down. So, system coupling run completed successfully. And here uh, is the report of the iterations, as you can see. Of course, and we have here just 100 iterations based on the input we have just used and of course it really it takes a very long time so it needs a very strong cpu now we're gonna open the solution it's better to get the solution from uh, this uh, especially the vectors the vectors the vectors uh, here are more accurate than the CFD post because I find in CFD post sometimes the uh, rotation uh, the is not correct but here it is uh, correct let's see you can get the contours from CFD post uh, it's better actually to get it from CFD post the pressure contours and also the velocity contours but the vectors try to get it to get them from here so let's see the graphics contours the pressure pressure here will not be uh, really uh, represented uh, good or better mm -hmm. let's see yeah okay because of this uh, chat or this vision here is not uh, good but here this is the solution based on the uh, pressure values we used and also the velocity so here uh, also you can uh, only get exclude the walls that's why it's better to get it from the CFD post okay we have here the velocity okay just close that and get the vectors so if you zoom in Yeah. You'll find here this is the correct rotation direction. Is this counter clockwise or any clockwise? So this is very good. You have to make sure of the correct rotation from this. Okay, and also if you can zoom in here notice here it's towards the exit and here is the vectors to upwards this means that the rotation is counterclockwise it is not clockwise and this is pretty good okay again here notice the arrows so do not include please the walls do not include include the walls just uh, include the interior and contact regions okay yeah the internal as you can see here this is very good that's pretty heavy zoom and here you will see the correct direction 
And also you can check if there is a reverse flow or recirculation, which is a common issue in centrifugal pumps, especially at off-design conditions. Okay, uh, now it's pretty good. Now we're gonna go to the ANSYS Mechanical. Save the project. Okay, let's see just here update the solution. Okay. Okay, results open. Now the results to see what happened. The effect of the fluid on the solid and the reaction force, which is pretty important to know. Uh, how much force needed to resist this reaction to uh, make the pump stable during the operation. Okay, here we go. Total deformation, as you can see, in millimeter. So this is the total deformation. Notice? That's pretty good. Okay. And equivalent elastic strain in millimeter to millimeter. As you can see, so this is the effect of the fluid on the structural. And the stress tool safety factor. 15 which is pretty good why because I used uh, low rotation speed uh, rotating speed or speed of rotation and uh, low velocity of course this pump will not be damaged and it's pretty good now the force reaction here on this bearing force reaction we'll find it pretty Small, it's just 17 Newton uh, as a total. Okay, minimum and maximum. And for the force reaction number two, it is uh, 190 because it is closer to the uh, this heavy mass. Okay, I, I think this. And here the maximum and the minimum. Okay, it's 190 Newton. Okay, so these uh, are the values needed to uh, carefully design the uh, bearing uh, fixation. Okay, but after getting more accurate solutions, of course, I'm just showing you what happened here. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in this tutorial, we talked about the system coupling. Now, again, we're going to review uh, this, uh, these steps. Uh, for example, open the geometry. <clears throat> so, again, uh, after preparing the fluid domain, here imported as add material, then the volute as add frozen, and then just extrude the face as add frozen uh, to, get, to make the inlet pipe and then the outlet pipe as at frozen. After that you import the solid parts. Just the solid parts is just the, uh, the solid impeller and the shaft. Okay, they rotate together. This is all uh, this CAD is very uh, simple. You can uh, make more details but However, you are allowed to do some uh, geometrical uh, simplicity 
for the CFD analysis to avoid any complexity or any issues. So I have here added as add frozen, but because it was separated into two parts, uh, when I select this, it is not selected this, uh, as you see. Notice that we have here this part and also this part. Okay, but this is separated from that. That's why I selected them both and created them from new part. Okay, just to treat it as one single part. After that, I generated the bearing by creating a plane from this face and give it notice here so just even millimeter offset offset uh, global z and then a sketch and I extruded this sketch add material and then I created a linear pattern and after that please here is fluid 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 and the sport solid solid for the the uh, solid rotating pillar and here the solids also for the bearing after that after that the mesh the name selection is pretty important Just the big deal is to get the projection to build your solid impeller based on the projection of the fluid field. As you can see here, the geometry just suppress all solid parts and the inlet flow, the inlet rotating impeller and stationary volute and the outlet okay and here's the dynamic wall any face that has an interaction with the solid impeller okay you can know these things as you can see and the outlet flow here okay and then close and then you do the setup uh, i'm going to show you now the boundary conditions I tried different different boundary conditions to make sure that it works, okay? The same the same setup transient, the same models, the materials, of course the cell zone, but here I just increased the rotating uh, the rotational speed. 303 radian per second which uh, it's like the paper I think and after that the boundary conditions the inlet uh, also you can increase this to 10% uh, and here is the mass flow rate and after that the outlet The outlet. I just assumed this gauge pressure. This is just as an assumption. You have to know the gauge pressure of the static pressure of your uh, pump. Okay. I just used higher values here. The dynamic wall. We do not do anything. Just leave it. Okay. After that, the dynamic mesh. The interfaces are automatically created. I just create an edit and select the dynamic wall system coupling close and the methods are coupled and these things are related to the accuracy and then the controls and here the monitors you can create a point of course you get the coordinates okay suppose that you want to monitor the pressure at a specific uh, zone here at the interaction solid uh, 
rotor and stator interaction at any location based on the sensor location, the location of the sensor of the experiment. You create it and then you come here, report files, and then you create new, new surface report area weighted average. And then you select, if you want to uh, monitor the pressure, study pressure, you select then the point. Okay. Uh, after that, you report the file, report plot, but uh, do not report it to the console. Let me cancel that. I'm going to show you here. Edit. Yes. Edit. So this is the file. Edit. So is it is the theme okay? Just uh, do not print it to console. This is the thing that I wanted to assure on. Do not print to the console. Why? Because I'm not gonna open Flame during the simulation. So no need to print the monitor here to the console. Okay. Okay. Just cancel close and after that you initialize your solution uh, and then run calculation and just uh, used lower time, uh, time step uh, of course it is recommended to get the uh, correct value based upon the calculations you read the papers and know how to get that and uh, number of time steps I just uh, used here uh, one or you uh, put uh, 20 but it will be overridden okay and your maximization these things will be determined in the system coupling okay And here for the mechanical everything, everything is the same except just one. Uh, here the step and time just so two seconds because zero point uh, one second. Okay. Uh, after that, okay, you close and then you start the system coupling the same way. Here, I'm gonna see the solution. Yes, yes, but for the analysis settings, notice in time uh, less or the same like mechanical uh, and step size 0 0.1. Okay, and the other information. So after that. Okay, let's see the solution for the new boundary conditions. Okay. Okay, here is the new solution. Based on the other boundary conditions and velocity as you can see became higher different distribution for the velocity the wall velocity of course zero and here is this okay okay all well, the vectors As you can see, gives another solution depending on the boundary conditions.
notice counterclockwise the vectors are pretty amazing and here the inlet pipe okay and you can see the circulation at off design condition here is the uh, off the design condition okay so the circulation will not appear only at low flow rates the pump recirculation causes issues okay okay so uh, now uh, one more thing about that the monitor the monitor that we used okay I uh, created the point uh, at a critical location of the pump uh, at the rotor stator interaction so to get the monitor where here is solution so if f1 if f1 is the direction if f1 fluent and you'll find here the report copy it it's gonna give us the values of the pressure at uh, the rotor steer interaction based on the coordinates I used before recording I uh, got the point e e just approximately here okay at the critical location of this uh, pump and of course it depends on the sensor location location of the sensor so let's see the pressure so as you can see something like this also you can uh, change make it like that uh, this is because uh, it's at the first we can cancel it and here is the distribution of the pressure at that location so it's like that okay there is some low pulsations okay this is used for the plots and graphs i get i got this based upon the this 303 exactly like fluent and this notice we have here some issues with the safety factor because of using a higher rotating speed and of course the forces will be higher and here the force reaction exactly 3044 it is very high this time and here is of course now we have five kilo newton or five point nine it's around six kilo newton okay five thousand and nine hundred and ninety five newton okay so of course this is more realistic but it's also based on the uh, mesh here which is not accurate okay it is not a fine mesh it's just coarse mesh so ladies and gentlemen i'm sorry this tutorial is pretty tough but uh, i showed you every uh, thing i showed you how to uh, create the blade and then the flow domain and then how to uh, get the uh, solid impeller by projection and these kind of details just Make sure that you can do uh, these things before using this uh, method because you will face lots of errors if your CAD models are not accurate or are not matching. Okay, so I wish this helps you and thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa